Thanks very much. Great to be here. So to, to kick things off, I'm going to give you a bit of a tale of woe, but uh, one of repair. So I've entitled this uh, talk, Things Fall Apart. Uh, so I'm going to give you a, a discussion of our, our efforts at the University of Michigan between economics and computer science to use uh, tweets to measure flows in the labor market. And uh, the first part of the talk was what a great job we were doing. The little part in the middle will be, well, things did fall apart. Uh, but then it was sort of for obvious reasons when you're dealing with a short sample and structural change. But the nice part is that you can uh, have hypotheses about uh, the repair, but also get internal evidence from the tweets of what went wrong and actually learn something, learn something from the experience. Uh, so my, my, I want to introduce my colleagues, uh, Dolan Antonucci, who just finished his PhD at Michigan in computer science, Mike Caffarella, who's a professor in computer science, uh, Maggie Levenstein, who is a uh, head of ICPSR and in Ross and in the Information School, and Chris Ray in computer science at, uh, at uh, Stanford. And th there are basically two papers I'll be presenting today. The first one, uh, the using social uh, media flows to, uh, using social media to measure labor market flows is the one where things were working really well. I'll sort of give you an indication of the methodology there and why we think it's actually very useful to use tweets to uh, track what's going on in the economy. And now, and then the second part, which is uh, where we're finishing up now, is uh, why it might be inst unstable, what you can learn about that from, uh, from the tweets as well. So uh, the original idea of this, starting back uh, five, six years, was that it'd be very nice to use high frequency data, uh, uh, such as tweets, to infer things about the economy in, in, virtually, in virtually real time. Uh, the whole theme of this conference is that uh, there's a lot of information out there, and this information could be highly useful for policymakers, financial market participants, um, and, and the public in figuring out what, what, is, what, is, what is going on. And since tweets are available sort of almost instantaneously, uh, that seemed like a, a good place to start. They also have other advantages, one of which is they're essentially public. People, there's no right of privacy in tweets because people put them out there. And uh, we were able to get access to the 10% Twitter, Twitter firehose, so you don't have the problem of saying going behind firewalls of proprietary uh, systems such as, such as Google. And we built a factor model basically by hand selecting tweets that we thought would be related to uh, job loss. Uh, took the fr first principal component, and I'll show you that it had remarkably good fit with, uh, with some ground truth, which was initial claims for UI. So what was our indicator? Uh, the indicator was the benchmark of weekly claims for new, uh, unemployment insurance. Uh, the, we picked this mainly because it's out there. We, we, when we started, we had two years of tweets. Uh, we wanted something fairly high frequency because uh, there are not a lot of time series observation. New claims for unemployment insurance are available weekly. They're actually quite timely. Uh, you get on uh, Thursday the uh, average of weekly claims for the previous calendar week ending, ending Saturday. So there's not, not a lot of, not, not a lot of uh, delay. Uh, but so we chose it mainly because it comes out frequently. It's also uh, fairly accurately measured. It's not, it's not a survey. It's actually an administrative census of adding up, uh, adding up who actually claims. So it's not based on a, a sample. It's based on a census. It's revised only once pretty, pretty small, uh, with pretty small revisions. And uh, that, that was available. It's, not, it's also the, sort of the very first piece of news that uh, policymakers get about the state of the economy. Uh, it's, it's of some interest to policymakers. Uh, uh, it's noisy and so on. It's often smooth, uh, but it's, it's, it seemed like the best thing to start with. Uh, so why might tweets be useful uh, for policymakers or financial market participants? Uh, first, they're, quickly, they're, they're uh, quick and relatively cheap relative to surveys. So my, another hat that I wear uh, often at the University of Michigan is, is doing surveys where we take two years and send people out in the field to track down extremely detailed information about 3,000 people at the cost of hundreds of dollars per interview and 
huge overhead costs plus tremendous delays. Now, there are big advantages to that. We get a huge amount of information. We follow the same people longitudinally. Um, we can ask them things which are subjective as well as objective. Uh, tweets are sort of, we, I view as a complement to that. We can, you can get what's on people's mind. That's the nice thing about Twitter. You're getting something subjective. Uh, but it's, uh, it's very quick and it's very cheap, at least in terms of marginal cost. Uh, I've been using this slide for a while, and it, uh, I, we then there was a question of whether you could get better information on turning points. I put a question mark there a couple of years ago, and I'm glad, glad I have that there, because that's kind of the theme of this talk. Uh, uh, but why, why is this of interest? Uh, uh, official statistics do particularly bad around turning points. I mean, there's a classic miss of GDP in the end of 2008 because basically because there's necessary extrapolation in official statistics. So exactly when policymakers want to know when the economy is shifting, uh, does uh, uh, the, the data are basically inertial because they're because they're based on lagged lag surveys and administrative data. Another nice thing about tweets, and I will give you an example of this, is you can go back and sort of do a survey ex post. Say something happens that you didn't think of to ask of in a survey, then you're kind of stuck because the survey is done. <coughs> uh, tweets are different. They're, they're an archive of data that, uh, that's collected on what's people's on mind. And, it's, and, if, it, and if there's a new hypothesis of interest that you occurs to you retrospectively, you can go back in the tweet database and actually make inferences uh, historically, which is, which is nice. And I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples where that happened. So what did we do uh, to collect this, uh, this uh, Michigan indicator? So we, we did a uh, hand selection uh, exercise, at least for this. By which we mean we sat around a table uh, with the economists and the computer scientists and introspected about what, uh, what a series might uh, match up with, uh, with uh, losing a job. And I'll give you, I'll give you some examples uh, in a second. That contrasts with the alternative machine learning uh, throw lots of data at it. Uh, uh, we've tried uh, in a companion paper doing uh, contrasting these approaches. And I, actually, I think for this context, it kind of runs counter to the usual advice now, which if you have big data, you should use these big data, data techniques to do the mining. What's the problem? The problem is if you're doing a macro time series, you're stuck with a very short ground truth couple of years, the social media hasn't been around forever. So your standard, you, you, have, might, you, have, you might have essentially infinite data on the social media side, but your ground truth is very parsimonious. It's almost impossible not to overfit using standard machine learning computer science techniques in this context. So I think this is the way to go here, but it does have some risks as I think will emerge. So then we basically collected these uh, sets, of, uh, sets of job loss tweets. I lost my job, I got fired, and so on. I'll show you, I'll show you the strings. And then extracted the first principal component and uh, looked at higher ones, but the first principal component basically did. And then uh, that's, our, that's our job loss index. And then we relate it to a uh, rolling index of UI claims as the, as the ground truth. So let me give you some idea of uh, what these job loss single signals are. They're things like axed, can, downsized, outsourced, pink slip. Uh, that turns out not to work, work, work very well. It has other meanings out there. Um, uh, we didn't use fired by itself because that's you know mainly missiles going off. Uh, but lost job, fired. In, in connection with job, been fired, laid off. And it, it's not just these phrases exactly. They're sort of misspellings and permutations and so on. And then we also had uh, unemployment signals where people mentioned unemployment and uh, are being unemployed. Uh, that, that required us. There is actually an underlying dummy in our index for the uh, first uh, Friday of the, uh, of the month to capture mentions of the unemployment report, which actually does 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 speak spike up. We also from the start collected a set of other tweets related to finding jobs, posting jobs, openings for jobs, and things like look like advertisements. I'll talk about those in the uh, second part of the talk. But this is what goes into the job loss index initially, and the the way the computer sciences do to do this is they uh, create n grams, which are just four n consecutive. Uh, uh, wor words, throwing out uh, emojis and uh, ex exclamation points and so on. And then uh, a job loss signal is any tweet that has at least one n-gram that has one of these words in it. 
So this is uh, what the factor loadings look like. So this is, this is all internal to the tweets. This is you take these uh, nine or 10 uh, signals and just do their uh, covariance matrix and extract the first principal component. So this, this has only internal to the tweets. We have not, not done anything where we're comparing it to the uh, new claims ground truth. So this tells you that these signals like axed, canned, downsize, outsource, go together. Pink slip, as I said, doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to go with it. Uh, lost job, fired job, been fired, laid off, uh, and so on. So these are, uh, the, the correlation structure is coming from within weak co correlation of seeing bursts of tweets with these topics. That's the, that's the covariance structure that we're exploiting. And it, 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 the first factor does, does pretty well. So let me tell you a bit about our success. Uh, first thing we do is we actually, with, with this first principal component, actually track the initial uh, claims ground truth quite well. Uh, we also are able to pick out particular shocks, and this is what I mean by the ex post, looking for things that happened in the data. And actually our, our factor index based on the tweets had fairly substantial incremental explanatory power over other ways you might forecast or now cast new claims. So let me just show you briefly some evidence on that. So uh, the black line, is that clear? Which is the top one if, if the colors aren't clear, is, uh, is actual initial claims and that's on the, on the uh, uh, left scale. The, the blue line is just the first principal component of job losses. There's, the, the, there's been no econometrics relating the two of these except to put them on the same, on, on this, in the same units. And it looks, you know, this, is, this, was, uh, this was our pretty de declaring victory. Uh, it, uh, they have similar volatility. Uh, uh, the uh, lower one, the, the uh, social media index is a little more volatile. That didn't bother us. It captures the same kind of downward trend that is not built into the procedure at all, and it, it they have some common uh, some common spikes. And interesting, those common spikes actually are things that you can point to. So that big common spike there is uh, Hurricane Sandy, which was related with a lot of people saying bad things in the job market and with increase in UI claimings. Uh, then there's another spike down. I, I don't know how easy you can see that, but in August. 13, there was a spike down in the black line, uh, no, sp no, no change in the blue line. This is actually uh, a dog that didn't bark. Uh, the, th the new claims spiked down because California changed the way they processed uh, new claims and there was like a one month delay in its processing. So the, 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 the reported thing fall, that of course nothing was going on in the economy and uh, nothing was happening in the tweets. Um, this last one is, my, is uh, Ted Cruz's uh, debut in the national scene. This is uh, the 2000, October 2013 government shutdown. I've, I got another paper out of that, so I didn't think I'd ever thank Ted Cruz for something, but <laughs> I will now. Uh, and, uh, and that led to, uh, that the new claims were not actually the government workers. They, uh, they, they, uh, they, they weren't covered, but there were a lot of uh, contractors and people around uh, government who, who filed for new claims, and we see a blip up there. So this is looking pretty good, uh, and we actually put this up on the web and offer this is you know ask Janet Yellen to look at it in real time and make monetary policy on it. So we're, that's th then, uh, and there's uh, some other evidence that uh, this was pretty good. This is uh, standard regressions, uh, where on the left hand side is the initial. Uh, the initial claims, uh, initial announcement, and then various things you might now cast with. The first column is uh, just the lag. It's highly serially correlated, so it does pretty well. Then the consensus forecast, you know, what the Wall Street Journal publishes a day in advance, uh, that has, uh, is almost unbiased uh, and has a higher R squared. And then here is our thing alone. You know, it's a little, uh, explains a little less of the variance, but it's certainly in the ballpark with, with the lagger consensus, which is very nice. And jumping over to the seventh column, you put all three together, and it, you know, there's some incremental information uh, for uh, in this now caster relative to both lags and the consensus with you know, a, t a pretty big t statistic. Not, not a huge amount of, of variance uh, explained, but this is something which, uh, when I first presented this, uh, an eye banker came up to me and said, hmm, this looks interesting. I, so uh, that was the end of that conversation. But uh, uh, so 
And it was a good thing I didn't <laughs> go into the business. Because uh, here's what, here's what, so you're proudly putting this out, and it's actually, it's actually it's on our web page for a year, and it's actually continued on pretty well. But then uh, what happened is uh, things fell apart. And what happened is initial claim ground truth started tracking down beginning in 2014, and our job loss indicator was relatively flat. So that's, that's, that's the basic facts, and here I show it to you in a, in a chart. So the blue line at the top is the new claims. You can see the initial part of the sample where it's tracking pretty well. And then, uh, and then there's this coming apart in beginning in, uh, in 14 where new claims falls and job loss doesn't, doesn't fall. Okay? So what does this mean? Uh, it means, uh, before we got into the economics, the computer scientists sort of want, began to worry, is there just something wrong with the Twitter stream? The uh, first thing we worried about is, is the normalization off? Like, we, we have to, we, this is job loss tweets per total tweets. What if total tweets was doing something, something odd? So, and we worried about sort of growth or decline of bots or retweets. Uh, the brief answer there is, is not. We did various normalizations based on total versus common words. There, that doesn't explain the trend. Uh, the second thing the computer scientists were worried about was what they called gray swans, which is that things happen uh, that, that, are, that sound like job loss, but they're big events like movies coming out called Friends with Benefits or, uh, or the Korean firing missiles that would have big spikes in explanatory power. So we did median filtering to try to, to basically bound the influences of outliers. That wasn't it. So it really, it really looked like it was some economics. So uh, why should we have actually not, uh, uh, not been that surprised? So job loss, in the early part of our sample, sort of 12, 13, 12, 13, beginning and into 11, Losing your job was actually ba pretty bad news because the economy was recovering, but the, but the recovery was by no means certain and by no means strong. Uh, then unemployment started falling pretty precipitously. During this early period, if you lost your job, you would head out to, head out to the unemployment insurance and, and, and claim. Uh, when things fell apart, uh, that was about when the economy was healing. Uh, the, the national unemployment was falling, and uh, job loss was probably not that bad a news. Uh, it means you, you lost your job, and you might say, well, okay, that's great. I'll go get a job I like better, and maybe not head to the unemployment office. So this is a hypothesis. This is not a hypothesis that comes as a surprise. It's well known that cyclically, if you had if we, we would have known this ahead of time if we had 40 years of twi Twitter data, that, uh, that uh, new claiming falls pretty dramatically uh, at the peak of the cycle. Actually, we even talked about this in the original NBER paper. I was, we talked about shifting beverage curves and tried to tease something out with posting it, but it was too early. We didn't actually see it. And when you have half a business cycle, what to do? But now we got, have the second half of the business cycle. This is just a hypothesis. I want to go from, okay, this is an excuse to maybe there's something in the data that actually confirms this view of why they, why they fall apart. So here, what we did is try to model the shift in the beverage, in, in, the, in the relationship using other information in tweets that I alluded to. In particular, we've gone from the one-factor model, which is just based on job loss, to a five-factor model, which we had actually had in mind. These are tweets we con collected originally but just didn't use because uh, they really weren't firing uh, for predicting uh, in our first sample. But this has been part of our data collection all along. So we look for a second factor, which is related to quit, a third factor, which looks like job posting. Basically, people do put announcements of jobs. And then we have mentions of hiring. And then talking thing, uh, search that looked like it was related to uh, jobs. So those are our five new factors. So here's what we did. We, oh, that's not, that's not pretty. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, ignore the upper, upper uh, right block. What that is, is the, what these are, are, ch are charts of the coefficient of our factor uh, when, we, when, when it's on the right-hand side and the ground truth, UI, is on the left-hand side. Okay? And what the, the thing you can't see is right when the, uh, right when the uh, things fell apart, 
the coefficient on job loss and the regression with, uh, that has UI on the left-hand side flipped from positive to negative, which is kind of what you, what you saw. That was the things fall apart. The, the things that you can see, and that's what you do need to see, are the coefficients of the five-factor model. Uh, and these are rolling coefficients with, and st with standard error bounds over time of the various coefficients. So uh, uh, the one in the upper left is the same job loss factor, but with the other factors. And you see it is roughly positive for, so that means losing your job means going to the UI office. And then, then uh, towards the end of the sample, it doesn't go negative. It actually just goes, uh, it goes uh, basically zero. What comes in instead is quits. So in the, per, oh, actually, I'm, I'm, I got played. So with, with quits, the, the second uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the left is, is just when job loss is dropping out, quits are coming in, but with the co so wrong sign or, or correct sign. If you quit, if you, if you say I quit uh, conditional on job loss, you're less likely to go to the UI office. But that only becomes important during this healing period where things fall apart because th this is the virtuous period of the labor market where things are getting strong. Uh, you, say this, you, see, you see exactly the same thing for posting. There's a big jump up and jump down, which I, I, mean, I don't want to over-explain. I, I really don't know what that uh, thing in the, in the middle is. Uh, that's, uh, I, my thesis advisor said, don't over-explain, so I won't. But uh, the, prepo the preponderance is, at the end, uh, a high, p uh, high posting means low uh, low UI claiming, which is exactly this story of search. Hiring, hiring uh, is in there, but only, 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 significant, only insignificantly. And then, uh, and then search uh, isn't as big either. It's, you know, this is a multivariate regression, hard to judge. But the basic story is the flip in sign of job loss, which you see univariately, a disappears. It goes from flipping positive to negative to flipping positive to zero. When you include indicators such as quit posting and so on, the quit posting things are picking up the uh, the the uh, virtuous part of the uh, uh, of the business cycle, where when you lose a job, it's not bad news, and you d therefore don't go to the UI office in exactly the way uh, you expect. So this suggests. Uh, that w when you're building a nowcaster like this, uh, one should probably put in things like this that might come in that, that aren't, aren't going to be energized over the, over the early part of the sample when you don't have that going on. Now, it's very hard to, hard to do this because, of course, early on, if you did this, you're just adding mean squared error. It goes against the nowcasting. But I think it's an important lesson uh, for actually use building economics a priori into, the, into, into these now casting. And especially when we have these short samples in social media, it's going to be uh, you know, problematic. You're going to be facing this trade-off between getting the explanation right versus getting the forecast right. But that is kind of inevitable when in this brave new world of five-year time series to try to explain a decade-long economy. And let me just conclude with uh, what happens when you do the five-factor model. Uh, the, this, is, uh, uh, this is the, uh, the new Nowcaster. Uh, it's doing about the same as before in the early part because it's mainly running off the job loss. Later on, the posting things are taking over and things are, things are tracking well. Two years, ask me whether this has held up. It's, it, it is unnerving, but uh, th that's the business. So thanks. I have, some, I have time for questions.